my heartiest congratulations to each and every one of you, all of you being uh, entrepreneurs. Please give yourself a very big hand. You know, uh, the last few days they burnt all the railway lines and they burnt all the trains and other things because they wanted jobs. But remember, you are the persons who are creating the jobs and not requiring to get the jobs, but you give jobs to other people. So that's the best part and the most beautiful thing of all of it. So Sweta, Padma and your entire team, Mr. Jain, all our other friends who are here, Anup Shah who mentioned about it. Uh, I must congratulate you because that is the most important thing of all. Uh, India is a country of entrepreneurs. In reality, uh, people start with Aage uh, Dukan, Piche Makan. And we, we now in building industry talk about walk to work in the Indian, in the English context. But all these concepts are actually Indian driven and we really had a lot of ideas to do it. I'm also a first generation entrepreneur. My father was a doctor, my elder brother was a doctor, my bhabhi was a doctor. There was nobody in my entire family, extended family, who had even a world of business. So it was extremely difficult for me to connect with what business is and what uh, uh, you know, trying to work and work on a profit issue was not something which actually came to me easily in my initial stages. So it was quite a challenge in order to be an entrepreneur. But having tasted blood of being an entrepreneur, I don't think I would be anything else. So once you really are an entrepreneur and really see the growth story of what difference that you can make from the time uh, we invested a couple of lakhs of rupees in the beginning, to whatever is the hundreds and thousands of crores that we do business in, I think the journey of an entrepreneur is always very exciting. But a couple of interesting things always come up to entrepreneurs and we always look up to many of the entrepreneurs and rightly so in order to do it. And everybody wants to say, let me achieve Mount Everest or at least let me become a Mukesh Ambani or let me become anything else. And then when you go through the story, you realize that one is always unhappy because your objective is Pukesh Ambani and not really your progress. So what is it that really has occurred to me over a period of years as to what actually I enjoy and what I enjoy today and what I enjoyed over the whole thing. What I've enjoyed today is the journey, actually. To be honest with you, the early sales that I used to make, I think the fun is so much. Now I don't even meet any of the customers. So all the joy of all that journey is gone because uh, earlier I would meet every customer, talk to him, deal with him and do that. Today, I don't get that opportunity. I have a whole team of salespeople. I have a marketing team. I have a customer relationship manager team. Uh, all those people actually come in between me and the customer. Now I have to set uh, a, a team of people to find out how the customers are feeling. So in reality, I have a disconnect with my direct customers and I don't even get the response of the whole thing. So in reality, what I've enjoyed is the journey. The journey part of it has actually taught me so much more than what I learned today in different sorts of ways that it is extremely exciting. The other thing which I want to share with you, my friends, and especially the people who are the younger ones who are there in this particular trade, is really how you can do improvement. Uh, when we started in projects like Pawai, uh, all buildings leaked, all buildings leaked. And when I told my chief engineer in the beginning of Pawai that I want to see that I make a building which doesn't leak, the chief engineer went out of my room and he started laughing. He thought the door was closed and I wouldn't hear it. And he was telling other people that I've worked in the biggest companies in India and everyone knows that after four or five monsoons, uh, the roofs will leak and the bathrooms will leak. I decided to sack my chief engineer and we got a junior engineer and we learned the line and we have now built 7,000 apartments in Pawai. Not one single, not one single bathroom leaks, not the terrace leak. And this is a story of 35 years and 120 buildings, zero building leak. So if you have a passion and you refer direction and you're clear in your mind as to what you want to do, 
whether it's in pharmaceuticals, whether it's in engineering, whether it's in building construction or anything, you really have to have a passion for what you do. And all these people over here, all you entrepreneurs have had a passion to do whatever you want to do. And if you can sit down and make that little difference, I tell you, it's a very great improvement. I run 14 colleges, seven schools in Bombay and two hospitals, and I teach students, everybody. And everybody tells us, how do we move up the value chain? And I said, and I share with them all the time, and I think it becomes applicable to entrepreneurs as much. I said, why can't you make a 1% improvement in your life every week? 1%. Very easy to make a 1% improvement. Can I make my product better? Can I improve my cash flows? Can I make a better service to my customer? Can I make some improvement in the product? And what is the improvement you want to make? 1%. Can you imagine if you make 1% every week, you'd make 52% every year. And if you're working on 10 years, what is the kind of improvement you can do with it? It's hardly anything and you really can do it. And I've had people who have come to me five years later and told me, I still remember the fact that you told me to do 1% improvement and really my quality of life has improved. So a larger number of people actually forget about the passion of improvement that you really need to do one step at a time. And if you do that one step at a time, irrespective of what you want to do, I promise you, you cannot but succeed. And it is so interesting to do. And it's the young people who really pick on much faster than people at my age, and I'm only 72, we find it difficult to say that at this age and time we are going to improve. But let me tell you a story of when I was 48. I went to my school, Campion School, my alma mater. I used to work, I never exercised, never had a time wanting to set up my life. And they made me do an old boys run. 40 years, 48 years old, you're going with uh, 12, 14, 16 year students. So naturally, they made me run 50 meters, only 50 meters. And when I finished 50 meters of running, I was panting. So I said, I'm not going to live beyond 60. I'm already 72, so I've survived. But having said at that time, I thought, I am panting. I have not done exercise. I never exercised. And those days, it was not fashionable to exercise either. And uh, so I really got it and I said, I must do start exercising. I started going to a gym. I started doing cardio, I started running. Today, let me talk to you about the last one week. I go to the gym three times a week. I do cardio three times a week. I run five kilometers in PTP at six o'clock in the morning if you want to join me. And uh, uh, five kilometers. And I try to do 10 kilometers of a marathon at least twice a year. So that's the kind of thing you do. So a form for age 48, you can do it. So age is not a thing, it's just a number. And forget Niranjan Hiranandani, talked about Captain Leela, of the, uh, Captain Nair of the Leela Hotels. At the age of 60, he decided to start textile business and then a hotel. In 20 years, 15 years, at the age of 82, he had built five hotels which were world leaders. Five hotels Captain Leela made between 62 and 82, which were the world leaders. So my friends who are old and uh, felt that that's the end of my life. Uh, yes, it is the end of your life if you think you're end of your life. And uh, 15 years ago, my father put me into education in a bigger way. And we grew all the education institutions. I have now 45,000 students in colleges, 16,000 students in schools. I have a university of which I'm a provost. And I helped to modify the national education policy at the state level with Dr. Marshalkar. So at any age and time, you as entrepreneurs can actually build and do anything that you can possibly do and that's the part of life. So I've been talking, I, me, myself, you, you, yourself, but let me talk about my daughter. My daughter is a chartered accountant, age, uh, she was in uh, Arthur Anderson, the company is no more, 
Then she went to a company called Ambit and she worked there for some time. Then she came one day to my office and said, I want to join you, Papa. So I said, why do you want to join me? Because you thought I'm a very unprofessional person at that point of time, at least. And uh, I, I believe I may have changed. Uh, so <laughs> at the age of 23, she decided to join me. After six months, she decided, I don't want to work for you anymore. I said, why you don't want to work? Oh, Papa, you know, if I do something very well, I'm Niranjan Hiranandani's daughter. And if I don't do it well, you're Niranjan Hiranandani's daughter and you don't do it well. So I don't want to do work for you. I want to do my own. In about three months time, she comes back to me and she says, uh, I want to start a call center. I said, what's a call center at that time? I'm, she's now 45. Uh, that was when she was 23. So she comes to me and says, I want a call center. She explained me what a call center is. And I said, telephone operating business? She says, Papa, you're old. And that is when she was 23. Uh, now she's 45. And so you can imagine if I was old then, what I am today. So that's the story. Okay, so she starts a call, call, call center in my Santa Cruz office. My office was there at that time. And she had 12 employees to start with. Fast forward, at age 27, Priya Hiranandani set up Zenda Technologies, built a company with 4,500 employees and sold it for 100 million US dollars at age 27. So it's not just one person who wants to be an entrepreneur. You know, anybody can do it at any age and time and the opportunities for the young with startups and funding, which is available now, is far more stronger to do it. Okay, that was ended. I thought, you know, exception case, kuch miracle hua hoga. My son, he went to Dubai because he didn't want to work again under the shelter of his father. So he decided to go to Dubai and he wants to do real estate in Dubai. So he, after three months, he phones me, Papa. You know, when son says Papa like that, you know, Salat Akhlif. <laughs> so he said, Papa, you know, uh, do you mind if I make my first building taller than your tallest building? Why should I bother? You're not competition, you're my son. Why would I feel bad about it? So, he's, so I said, but how tall is your this building? So he's in 90 story residential. I said, but the tall at that time, he's now 40. That time he was 21, 22, 22, 23. And he said, I said, but the tallest building at that point of time, residential tower in the world was 84 story. He wants to build the first building he wants to make is 90 story. So I said, the tallest building in the world is now 80 stories, as I know, because I'm in real estate. So he says, Papa, that is why I want to build that building 90 story, because it should be the tallest in the world. And there was a recession. He completed the building at whatever age, I don't remember. There were some problems in between, and he completed the building. When he finished the building, which was 90 stories, and he now lives in the penthouse of that building of 20,000 feet, and the second tallest residential tower in the world just now, and he stays there and he made a profit and he did, gifted me a helicopter. Somebody asked him, somebody asked him, your father can't afford a helicopter? He says, he, my father definitely can afford more than one helicopter, but he doesn't have the guts to buy one, so I had to gift it. <laughs> so in, the, in life, you know, we all believe the skills of entrepreneurship are unlimited and unbelievable. No matter what you do and what you do, it doesn't matter where you begin with. You can begin from there, you can begin from here, you can begin from here, begin from here. All you got to do is aspire to move up, whether it's one step at a time or 10 steps at a time, it doesn't matter. You can start from anywhere in your life. As long as the movement is moving up, whether you're a zero or minus 10, it doesn't matter. As long as you're doing it and look at it, damn it, we have a chaiwala who becomes a prime minister. So why can't you do anything? So you have the best examples in the world. So if you're a chaiwala, it's okay. It doesn't matter what you are. I mean, irrespective of what you do, as long as you're willing to aspire to move up in the value chain and be able to take care of the fast forward that we really want to do, there is an opportunity to do anything else. Of course, you need to do hard work. Of course, you have to have entrepreneurial skills. Of course, you want to dare. Of course, you want to face all these 
rascal corrupt uh, officers in the government, in the departments who harass you. I'm sure all the entrepreneurs have gone through all that experience. But in spite of everything, the country is growing. We're doing extremely well. And I think the opportunity of growth is huge and humongous in this country. We will have setbacks, we will have problems, but I promise you that if you have that entrepreneur skill, we will progress, but be happy, not with the destination. Be happy with the journey. So you will enjoy the growth <laughs> rather than your achievement. Now you asked me to ask a relevant question. I had actually an irrelevant question. <laughs> Sir, how do you produce children who can gift you helicopters like this and who can sell businesses for a hundred million dollars? It's a very good question. <laughs> the first answer is very, very simple. Nothing grows under a banyan tree. Have you seen anything grow under a banyan tree? No. Nothing. You are a banyan tree as a father, as a mother, as a parent, as a person who does progress. Let them go out in the sun. The most beautiful flowers and fruits in the world is not grown under the banyan tree. No beautiful flower in the world ever blooms under a banyan tree. No beautiful fruit ever blooms in it. You need the sun, you need the rain, you have to do it. Let your children go out of the world. Move out of your shelter and umbrella. So if you don't... The more you keep them under the banyan tree, the more protected you give them, they will do it. Yes, they will make mistakes. They'll go wrong, they will go right, they will grow up, they will fall down. But only when you give them that opportunity to grow and move out of the umbrella under which you want them to be, the more cloistered you keep your children, the more they. It's a very Indian instinct to keep your children close to you. As a parent, as a grandparent, I've got uh, two flats kept in my building, uh, which I own in uh, Malabar Hill where I've kept rooms for my grandchildren furnished and ready for them to come from abroad and live here with me. They don't come. But the point is not that. The point is you know that they must move out in the world irrespective of where you want to do. And at a particular point of time, give them an opportunity to get the heat of the sun, to be able to do whatever they want to do. Move out of that banyan tree and do it. Even if it's for a short period of time. You can bring them back again if they want to join you in the business of business or other thing. But see that they go out, learn, get beaten up, get this thing, get exposed. But then you're creating tyrants. They are tigers. And they won't listen to you again. So the advantage is that they will grow, they will become beautiful, they will flower, they will fruit, but they will not be in your control. Are you ready to do that? So, if you're ready True. to do and give them the control and let them flower and fruit and not be under your kabja, you take the risk and they will grow. Good evening, sir. This is Jignisha Bansali. Uh, I have a venture which is a bootstrap and I'm at a junction where I'm not sure whether I should continue as a bootstrap or look for investments. I'll tell you the reason for not looking for investments is I'm scared. Because I'm scared when I borrow money from the market, I have to repay them in, in ten folds in very many ways. So what is your uh, suggestion? I have a skincare company and it's a chemical free kind of a product. So what would be your suggestion, sir? It depends what you want to do in terms of what you want to grow, how much you want to grow, how much risk that you want to take. Do you want to remain small? Do you want to become big? Do you want to become the biggest? And you have to take the risk. So if you want to be an entrepreneur which is growing, then you have to take risks. The extent of risk is a calculation. Whether I will take debt, to what extent will I take? If I take an investment, what will I take? Nowadays, people don't take that kind of risk. If you have nothing to lose, you cannot take a big. So you have a startup which actually gets investors into the line and you're risk-free because you don't have the money to lose. The problem with people like us and you may be that uh, we have so much money to lose that we are scared to take risks. In reality, when you have more, you can take more risk. Like you have a Mr. Mukesh Ambani, irrespective of his growth, he will keep on taking more and more risk because he's willing to do it. 
बट मोस्ट ऑफ आस आर रिवर्स हमारे पास पचास करोड़ है हम वो खो नहीं चाहते हैं खोना नहीं चाहते सो यू स्केर दैट यू गोइंग टू टेक दैट एंड यू विल गेट अ रिस्क और यू डू रिस्क एंड यू टेक अ ग्रो दैट्स अ कैलकुलेशन विच ईच इंडिविजुअल पर्सन हैज एंड एट डिफरेंट स्टेजेस इन लाइफ योर रिस्क एडवर्टाइज विल बी डिफरेंट बट यू हैव अ कैप्टन डायर हु टू कर लिस्ट एट एज सिक्सटी टू एंड डिसाइडेड दैट ही वॉन्ट्स टू ग्रो एंड ही बॉरोड मनी एंड ही प्लू एट एंड ही बेट द बेस्ट होटल्स एंड ही जस्ट वेंट इन एंड ही सक्सीडेड some people have grown and they have failed also so risk in entrepreneurship is also about accepting failures and moving on after the whole thing is there and uh, niranjan hiranandani is seen for his successes but they don't know in my 45 years of career i have had 10 failures also but because i have succeeded more than i have failed you don't see the failures in my life if i have to list the number of failures i will spend next 3 hours saying that only and you'll be tired of my failures not my successes so in life as an entrepreneur yes you should take the risk of whatever it is but the appetite of risk of different people at different stages in life is different so you i cannot advise you or anyone in this audience Excellent. or anyone in the world at what stage you should take how much risk because the the, the business, entrepreneur's risk appetite will change from time to time the atmosphere and what he wants to do and the extent to which he wants to commit it so if you are happy to take that risk you will take it but entrepreneurship is only about risk so the extent of risk is something nobody can tell you i can mentor you i can guide you i can suggest to you depending on the circumstances of your case but it will not be mine mine will be only a mentoring the decision will be yours and the risk capital will be yours but all business is about some risk whether you want to take a little more risk or not is your choice not mine there was a question which was asked my name is harish kumar i come from the healthcare industry that how do you nurture your children but at the same time how, how do, do you, you how do you nurture uh, how do you nurture your children yeah okay my question Hi, there would be how do you nurture your team the same way or is it different wonderful yeah. question uh when you nurture your team there are different levels of teams that you create the teams who are not so bright but they have integrity with them they are committed to you i have employees who have my top 7 employees five of them average life with me is 30 years so it's a matter of integrity they may not be the brightest of bright people but their commitment and learning level is so high that today they are seen as some of the brightest in the industry simply because they have grown from ordinary people to extraordinary people by virtue of commitment and a passion to work so that's one segment of it the second segment is extraordinary uh, talent which you import at a particular point of time of people who will not stick to you they will come they will teach you they will work with you they will take their salary and then they will say after 2 years i want to move on nothing wrong they are different set of people who will do it the first only learn from you the second come and teach you and maybe you teach them a bit but they teach you more than what you teach them so there will be a second category of people who will do and in this age of time for instance if i want to imbibe technology for example in real estate I have to get younger people to come into my company. I can't expect a 35 year working with me to now imbibe new technology in my company. So I will get much younger people to look at technology, much younger people in order to have that aggression and uh, 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 parts of it to make the changes that we need to do, the innovation that you need to create in technology because every business today has to have a technology backend. No matter what the business is, whether it's pharmaceutical whether it's in the real estate whether it's marketing the tools of technology is immense and you cannot but involve technology in your systems to do it but you will have to have younger people to come into the technology part in order to do it so you balance people of integrity time people who are with you even if they are ordinary make them into extraordinary by constantly keeping them with you embrace those people because they will not leave you 
in when your market is down or you are in difficulty the rest of the people you will bring them into the thing because you have no choice you have to bring these people and uh, irrespective of what line and industry you are you have to see that fresh blood comes into your line in order to create the innovative product that you want to do the difference is that you need to do nothing else if you don't want to do in technology you must get the younger people to come into your line so for the people whom you want to do in terms of it what is the difference between the two that you want to really uh, do it uh, the the only difference that you i see because my top 10 20 people are family to me so i treat them as family their family members are my family so if something goes wrong with them or their family i will go to the hospital as much as i will go to my own family so those people who are with us in that sense of the term i will look after them like family so they are my extended family irrespective of they are my employees or whatever it is you call them employees i call them the hiranandani family that's how i designate them also in my company as far as my children are concerned they are also family but they are blood family this is adopted family so which is more precious this is not by choice god has given me this is by choice which is better you decide